Good morning. We're covering the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In these last six, six times, I've been posted on, on Facebook and uh, YouTube. And so if you like to listen to all the sessions, you can get a, 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 a look at our website. And there's a link there to, to YouTube. And that way you could sort of... Uh, uh, deal with it and uh, and study some more. I want to begin this this morning with verse eleven of First Corinthians twelve, and let me read a little bit. Uh, 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 verse ten: To another, working of miracles; to another, prophecy; to another, discerning of spirits; to another, diverse tongues; and and, and to another, interpretation of tongues. In terms of uh, of this verse. Key thing here is that the prophecy he's speaking out here, it is it has to do with prophesying. There's nothing to do with the prophet. When Paul says to another prophecy, he is not referring to the gift of the prophet, because Ephesians four talks about there are people that are teachers, that are pastors, that are uh, evangelists and prophets. So there's a difference between what the prophet does and what prophecy is. Prophecy, prophecy in 1 Corinthians 12 is prophesying according to 1 Corinthians 14.3. So when I go to 1 Corinthians 14.3, it reads uh, this way. Uh, but he who prophesies speaks unto men for edification, exhortation, and comfort. So the idea of exhortation, comfort, has to do with uh, helping. Somebody working in the kitchen, somebody plays a piano, someone works in a committee, someone, uh, 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 it's a vocal gift. It's the ability of speaking good upon the lives of people by prophesying by edifying, by building, by comforting, teaching, uh, teaching Sunday school, and, uh, and, of course, doing evangelism in the streets. Now, why is it that's been so much problems with this, these two concepts of, of the prophet and the prophesying? It's because, you see, we, we have not understood this concept. But I want you to know that as I was 10 years old in Brazil, already been taught that way. It is the South American way of understanding. And the, and the, and the, and the, as a matter of fact, the whole world uh, understands it this way in the third world countries. Why is it that in America is so much problem? It's because most of our churches want nothing to do with the Holy Spirit. That scares people away from church. And so you have that gospel that it, it sounds good, it teaches good, it feels good, but doesn't convict. And of course, salvation must convict. Remember John uh, uh, 16, when the Holy Spirit has come, he will convict the world of sin. There's no conviction of sin. So life continues the same. There's no conviction of righteousness. There's no conviction of judgment uh, because we, we, we do not accept any way, shape, or form that Satan is alive and working in our churches. Uh, it, it, this is unheard of. There's no such a thing. And so, and so here you are. The church is dying. Membership is dwindling. And people are fighting against each other and hating each other and doing it gladly. And so, and so when you kick the Holy Spirit out of the churches, this is what you get. So let's begin by looking at 1 Corinthians 12 in verse 11. Then Paul says, but these work, these what? Word of knowledge, word of wisdom, discerning of spirit, faith, work, and mere gifts of healing, prophecy, tongues, and protection. Work. They work. That one in the self-same spirit, meaning what is the, the self-same spirit? The Holy Spirit himself works these things. What is the difference here? The difference is that you have the word anointed. 
When somebody is anointed, it means that they have something. And if somebody is anointed of God, they have something. And you see, you can't have the Holy Spirit. It's a manifestation of the Holy Spirit in somebody's life. So we could say that because someone has a manifestation of the Holy Spirit in their lives, they become anointed. Now, I, I agree with that. But in no way, shape, or form, I, I, I have control of the Holy Spirit. There's an understanding in my brain that I don't have control of the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit manifests himself, and he works all of it. I have nothing to do with it. You see, that comes out of 40 years of working in this area to know that when I had something to do with it, God would not work. That when I got involved in doing it, it didn't work. But when I began to move by faith, trusting that God would show up, things began to work. And so is this a process? Yes, it's a process. Because the more, the more you understand the nature of God, you cannot take a form of anything in the presence of God that rises above the knowledge of God. You know, rising above the knowledge of God because you have a PhD. That is witchcraft in essence. A witch does that very well too. We, we have the idea that we can speak uh, uh, as if we... Listen, Herod came up in Caesarea and spoke eloquently to the people. And some yelled from the crowd, oh, there, he's a god, he's a god. And the word says the worms ate him. And so I, I, I have no, no desire whatsoever that you put me in a pedestal and think that I have something that, that's bigger than what you have. I, it's wrong, I don't receive that. And, and when people refer to me as, as somebody that... Uh, has a gift or it's special. I, I try to change their minds. I'm not. I'm just as desperate, sinful as you are trying to get to heaven one way or the other. And that's the understanding that enables the Holy Spirit to operate. You know, I used to say to people, I have a little bit of a low self-esteem because I'm from Brazil and short and beautiful. <laughs> and... And my, 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 sweet, my, 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 my low self-esteem uh, comes out of uh, being, being naturalized and immigrant and being in America. You know, I, I look different. I look like I swam the river, Rio Grande. My pride does not go above because my, my self-esteem keeps it low. And, and I think that's a wonderful it's wonderful. Sometimes I meet leaders and people of God, and I hate to tell you, I start crying in front of them. I just don't, I just don't know what to do. I, I, this is the way I am. It, it, in other words, don't take advantage of me. I'm not a pushover. I'm not weak and wimp. I just don't feel like that because I have the right to do anything or that I am in charge of this and I'm going to operate again. No, I don't. I don't. I'm fearful of that. I'm scared, scared of it because it quenches the Holy Spirit. So I came up with a way to somehow let God use me without becoming proudful. Now, when God begins to move and the door is open for him to move where I am, I can tell you this, I will obey every single word he says. And the result is that Five will leave the church, and 50 comes from the front door and stays. So that's the history. When, that, when God begins to move, he does wonderful things. And so, but these work that one in the same spirit. What this is saying is the gifts are produced and operated by the energy of the Holy Spirit and not the energy of Rick or anybody else. And then it says... Dividing to every man severely as he wills. So the distribution is within the operation of the Holy Spirit. And so let's take a look now to three gifts and uh, three gifts of, uh, that are of faith. And before I begin, let me, let, me, let me say to you, 
When you read 1 Corinthians 12, it's scrambled. When you read Galatians 5.22, the fruits are in order. And so all you have to do is to put the fruits here and put and match the gifts with the fruits, and it comes into order. Word of knowledge, love. Word of wisdom, joy. Discerning of spirits, peace. Now the other three is faith, gifts of healing, and working of miracles. So let's take a look at these three. Uh, faith, in this sense, is a surge of special, supernatural move of faith in someone's life, above and beyond. Uh, remember the definition of faith in Hebrews 11.1? 1? Everybody knows Hebrews 11.1 1 because it's sort of a, it's a, it's a definition of, of faith. Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Remember that? Okay, that is uh, the definition of faith. When it comes to faith in 1 Corinthians 12, it's something beyond and above. And uh, I'd like to give you a biblical example of this. So let's go to uh, Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. Matthew chapter 8, verse 8. It's just one, uh, Matthew 8, 8. Uh, the centurion answered and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that you should come under my roof, but speak a word only, and my servants shall be healed. And, of course, Jesus said to him, uh, uh, For I'm a man in authority, having soldiers under me, and I say to this man, go, and this man comes to another come, and he goes to my servant, do this, and he does it. When Jesus heard this, he marveled and said to them that follow him, Verily, verily, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. So what happened to this centurion? As he met Jesus, and he saw the glory of Jesus, he saw the presence, the tenderness, the beautiful eyes, the gentleness, the, the aura, the power of the Holy Spirit upon the Son of God. His spirit, his soul was convicted. He was touched abundantly, powerfully. And he simply said, Sir, if you say anything, uh, let me read because I lost my train of thought. If you, if you simply just say anything, if you say anything, my servant will be healed. Just say anything, and he is healed completely. And, of course, uh, 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 the, the, the Matthew 8, 8 uh, talks about, uh, uh, talks about at the end of the scripture uh, that, and Jesus said unto the centurion, go your way, and as you have believed, so be it done unto you. And look what happens. And his servant was healed in the selfsame hour. So in the moment, Jesus said, go your way, he's healed. Do you, you understand? Meaning that the faith of the centurion was something beyond and above. Special faith. I, I can tell you all kinds of stories, but, uh, but uh, we don't have the time to tell. But let me, let me tell you one. We are in a studio in Athens, Georgia. Two men came to me and said that uh, they want me to... Uh, Cancel a lease on the next building. It's a lease. It's a document. And I said, well, I'm, you can cancel the lease. I guess it's fine. Uh, uh, where do we go? He said, stay in this building, and I'll give you whatever you want. Well, I came upstairs here because this doesn't belong to us. And I said, you give me the whole building? He said, the whole building. But I want this wall taken out, and I want the studio to be larger and bigger, and I want the place painted. And, I, and it says, everything is be done according to what you want. And they walked away. Now, we don't pay enough to deserve this property. We don't pay enough. These are men of God that saw. But I moved in faith. I asked them 
if I could have this wall out and the door there. And so they came here in a matter of two days. They cleaned everything and did everything else. So in me, faith came in. It was overwhelming. It came in. It just, just build me up. Now, every time faith comes over me, there's some healing. Healing in somebody else. Uh, and so faith over here, in, in terms of 1 Corinthians 12 on the gifts, is a surge of special faith that comes over you. And I said in my spirit, we need $15,000 to take to Cuba. And people are sending money from everywhere to, to, to pay Cuba. Now, how do I come up with the I just believed. I have faith to believe that we need to. I just have faith to believe to call things that be not as though they were. I just keep on doing all my life. Everything we do is that I believe in faith and God does it. And so healing in this sense is very powerful. Mark 9, 21. Mark 9, 21 is a story of a, uh, a young man that uh, was full of evil spirits. And, uh, and he asked his father, how long has the boy been this way? Uh, uh, he said, of a child. And oftentimes he cast him in the fire in the waters to destroy him. But if you can do anything, have compassion on us and help us. So here's a, a man that knew what an unclean spirit is, been with a child from 10, 11, 12 years old, must have been an 18-year-old boy, 15-year-old boy. He knew that was a, something unnatural there. And, and so Jesus said unto him, if you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Meaning, believing is faith, is believing. Out of the ordinary, supernaturally, you decide that you want to have faith. Why is it that people are not blessed? Why is it that there are circumstances in life that never happen? It's because you never moved in faith. When you move in faith, then God begins to do what he needs to do. Uh, Tay Tay came to us, went to Brazil, believing that God would heal him, and God is healing him and restoring his life. Uh, the same thing with uh, you know, all kinds of things. There was a young man that came here from Tennessee. And he, uh, uh, he was just a, a very sweet, gentle young man. And yet, full of problems and full of need. And, uh, but before he left, he believed that uh, he would become a pastor. Today, he has a church. He's finishing seminary and has his third child. You see, uh, faith. Faith. Now, why is it that faith is not surging in you? Is because uh, you are not understanding. Well, let me give another example of this. And somebody invited me to preach somewhere. And I went to preach in this place. And the Lord said, pour water on them, bottle after bottle, wet the whole congregation. Well, I'm the man to do that. <laughs> and uh, I believe that uh, I heard clearly. And ask for the offering that they need. It was, it was $65,000. Well, I believed in that. And I began to throw water. And I began to, I mean, I, 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 I became a fool. Just a very, very, very man out of order completely to the naked eye. But in my spirit, I knew that if I was obedient to God, he Now, imagine if nothing came in on the offering. I'd be looking like an idiot. But I knew it. In my spirit, I felt faith. I felt this surge come, a faith within me. I pick up the first bottle. And I remember behind me was a, a hairy praise leader. Uh, and he run away. So why he run away? It's because he is a liturgical young man who doesn't quite believe that God can do extraordinary things. But God did extraordinary miracles to the mouth through the hands of Paul. So the handkerchiefs were taken from him and touched somebody else, and they were healed. And the faith people came in, and the faith people touched the handkerchief, and the faith people took the handkerchief, and the miracle occurred. So faith is something that you don't mess with it and, and, and not see God move and do wonderful things. Faith is essential. And so faith in the era of healing is critical. You know, I remember that woman who had a husband that uh, 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 needed to be healed. Well, he, she brought him forward and the Lord healed. I don't know how many people have been healed in my ministry. I don't pay attention and I don't ask questions. All I know is happens. And so faith. Faith is a gift. 
it appears in a moment of revelation and healing begins to occur. Now, I have a, an example of you to share with you about a woman. And, of course, all the others that I remember or happen, uh, you know, it's just so many I, I can't keep together. And I really should, shouldn't uh, say this to you because it, 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 you, you might think it creates pride in me, but you know where I am about my pride. I, 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 I don't think much of myself. All I know is that God did it, and to him the glory. So let's, let me tell you this story. After a five-hour service in Brazil at a large church, five hours, I had, I tell you, my suit was wet, dripping. My pants all wet. I mean, it was hot in there. We got into the bus. And I was the last to get in that bus. You know, when the Lord opened up and I'm about to get in, there's a woman kneeling at the door, and she grabbed my suit and pulled my, man, I, I didn't like it. You know, I really didn't like it. What? Come on now. And I just got on the bus. And the Holy Spirit came and said, get back there. In other words, you're rude. And I was rude because, man, after five hours, she should have been at the altar to receive prayer. She come to bother me. I'm ready to go home. And so I went back to her. When she grabbed my shirt, I couldn't, I couldn't go. She, she's pulling me. <laughs> she had a strong hold on my Sears uh, blue blazer, you know, holding on to it. And so I went back, and I didn't kneel down as I usually do to a woman to pray for her. I don't stand on top of her, kneel down. I said, yes. And she pulled, didn't look at me, just pulled my jacket. Pray for me. Pray. Pray for me. When I heard her pray for me, okay, I knew that I had missed it. Why? Because I felt her faith. I felt that, that, that <laughs> I felt something there. Now, you know, after five hours now, I'm not talking about an hour Sunday morning. Five! To where you are just dizzy. You want to go home. So I, I just went down, got her hands out of my jacket, which was hard to do. She wouldn't let me go. Grab, hold my hand. Hold, and I went down in love and, and began to say, Heavenly Father, this woman needs to be healed, Lord. And this is serious. If you don't heal her, she will die. Oh, God, why do I have to do this? You're the one who heals. I guess you need me to hold her hand, I guess. And I prayed a prayer. And before too long, I'm weeping and crying because, you know, I felt sorry for this woman. I really did. And I, and, and I didn't have pity, but I had compassion. I felt that I, and so that, that was it. You know, she got up and hugged me and turned around, got the bus, and she left. Well, about a week later, before we got back to the States, there she is in the door of the mission with a bunch of paper. She was cleared from the test that she had from AIDS. And she was completely healed. And all she did is to hug me, and there goes another 30 minutes of crying and weeping, and I have to hold her. And she's crying and weeping, and I'm crying and weeping. And she said, I just came to thank you. Thank you. Now, is that my anointing that healed her? No. Is that, matter of fact, all that God wants me to do is to touch her hand and have compassion on her. Who healed her? God did. Why did God heal her and why she came to you? It's because God heals to the life of somebody else. He needs somebody else to do what he's bidding. That's what a preacher is supposed to do. He, God uses him to do that type of thing. And so I just, just did. I almost missed it. You know, I have a conviction. Then that five-hour service, nobody received any healing, perhaps. The only one who did was right here. But she received it because there was faith in her. Now, when you have this type of faith, patience operates. Word of knowledge, love operates. Word of wisdom, joy operates. Discerning of spirits or distinguishing spirits, peace operates. Faith creates patience. Now, tell me somebody with more patience, more patience than this woman. 
After a five hour, she comes for prayer and she's gently waiting that I'm convicted to touch her both hands and, 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 and pray for her. The gift of faith. Now notice that when you go in 1 Corinthians 12, that what you read in 1 Corinthians 12 has to do uh, with this. To one, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. To another, faith by the same spirit. And so here you're speaking about a gift that is born within the person. Now, faith comes in by understanding scriptures. So she understood. Faith comes in by accepting God and his word in your life, the Bible. She understood. Faith comes in by being exposed to the presence of God in worship and, and, and growing maturely. Notice that every one of us have a measure of faith. When you go into, when you go into uh, Romans 12, you begin to understand this concept of a faith that is essentially grows and develops, and I want to show it to you, Romans 12, uh, and it, it, it's having, it's Paul speaking about verse 5, so being, Romans 12, 5, got it? So be many are one body in Christ, and every one members of one another. It's simply having then gifts, Deferring according to the grace that is given us. Because if it is a manifestation, if it is God dividing according to his will, Romans 12, 11 and 12, 11 and 12. Then Romans 12 says, according to the grace that is given us, another way of saying it. So one more time. Dividing, 1 Corinthians 12, dividing to every man severely as he wills. Now in Romans 12, having then gifts according to the grace that is given us, Paul introduces a concept when he says, where the prophecy here in this word prophecy, it is the same identical word in 1 Corinthians 12. So Paul is speaking here, not according to gifts of ministry or ministry to our ministry, but teaching, meaning ministering here is not actually the word of being the pastor, the teacher, but ministry here is the one that serves. So in, first, in Romans 12, it is prophesying. Exhorting, it talks about exhorting, or he who exhorts and exhorts and in, 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 in shows mercy and diligence. Notice that nothing about the prophet here. This is prophesying. So that should fix your idea about Romans 12. But look what he says on verse 6. Let us prophesy, means prophesying according to the proportion of our faith. So what I'm saying to you is that as you prophesy 85 building comforting, there are levels of faith. You can increase your faith. What happens when your faith is increased? The gifts begin to operate. So let me do a parenthesis here, right there. When your faith increases, the gifts operate. The gifts do not operate on 2% faith. Why? Because you won't believe. You will not see. You not feel. You you not believe in the operation of the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And that's why the church is in America today. We don't have enough faith to see the operation of the gifts. Because we don't believe it. 
We don't, we don't like it. We, we, do, we do pay attention to Pentecostal Sunday, but that's it. How can the Spirit of Jesus, who is in heaven, how can the Holy Spirit of Jesus convict of men of salvation when you don't believe? What kind of teacher, what kind of preacher you have become that you believe more in retirement and pension than you believe in the act of God convicting the sinner? And so what you do is you tickle them and make them laugh and make them nice, and they will come in rows. But any man that preaches conviction of the Holy Spirit, there are fruits. You know, I don't have a church. But there are thousands that have been saved and delivered and set free because I believe the Holy Spirit is able to convict. Now, that doesn't make me charismatic, doesn't make me automatic. I know you, you, that's what you think. But remember yesterday I told you that if you believe this way and you keep on accusing people of being this and that, you are believing the Holy Spirit, which is a gift that will not be forgiven to you if you do it. So be careful with your big mouth. Try not, try to understand that Jesus is in heaven and the Holy Spirit is on earth and he has to be believed to be the Spirit of Jesus, the Holy Spirit. And if you believe that, then God will bless your life, bless your ministry, double. You know, I know a man in Illinois today that's fighting a bunch of demons in that church and he's going to win. He's going to win because he believes that God is able. Now, his faith is stronger than 15 demons. What kind of faith do you have? Today, we spend time dealing with faith as a power gift. There are three power gifts. Faith, gifts of healings, and working of miracles. There are three vocal gifts. Prophesying, tongues, and interpretation. We're going to cover all of them. We're going to deal with all of them. And, our, uh, and I hope that you'll be here tomorrow to listen. Amen? And by the way, uh, if I offended you and it fits, wear it. If, if the shoe fits, wear it. Don't get mad with me. Why? Uh, it's wasting your time. I, I, I'm here to, to tell you what the Lord has done in my life and how he moves and how the Holy Spirit operates. So I hope that you'll be growing up and tell other people to listen to this and let's get ahead. Why, why do I want you to, 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 to join this thinking? It's because it brings people to Christ. It convicts people of sin, and there's a lot of salvation. You know, in my little Bible study in Atlanta, a little girl showed up. She was just white as can be. White as paper, skinny, sitting back there. And I preached like this. And she was convicted and received Christ. She's been trying to cut her wrist and, and, and she's been trying to kill herself. And today she is praying guitar for us and she's doing a beautiful job. And we love that little girl that came to Christ. Now, she was convicted. I hope you will too. I hope you'll be convicted. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.